is part 60 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the advantage of using underscore view standard CSHTML file. Please watch part 59 before proceeding. We'll be working with the same example that we started in part 59. In part 59, we discussed that to associate a view with a layout file, we have to set layout property on each and every view. If you recollect from the previous session, we associated this layout file with the index view and to do that we have to set the layout property and similarly on the edit view we have set the layout property now at the moment if you notice when we navigate to create view you know look at that the layout view is not associated with this create view and if I have a, if I have to associate this view with that layout file I have to specify layout property on this view as well so we have to repeat that on each and every view. Just imagine if I have 200 views, how much effort it is going to involve. Okay, so obviously, first of all, repeating code violates dry principle, that is, don't repeat yourself. And violating this principle has two disadvantages. One, it leads to redundant code. And redundant code obviously leads to maintenance overhead. For example, tomorrow if we have to use a different layout file, then all the new views need to be updated. So in each and every view, we have to go and update this layout property to use a different layout file. Okay, so how do we solve this issue? To solve this, we have this underscore view start dot CSHTML file. This is introduced in ASP.NET MVC3. We can specify the layout property once in this file and then place that file within views folder. So notice that I have this underscore view start dot CSHTML file here. Within that, we are going to specify layout property just like this and then we are going to place that within the views folder and then all the views within that folder are going to make use of the layout file that is specified in that view start file okay so obviously this eliminates this view start start file eliminates the need to specify layout property on each and every view and it makes our views more cleaner because we have less code there and they're also more maintainable now okay now there might be scenarios where we want a set of views uh, in a specific folder to use a different layout file for example look at this home folder Now, let's say all the views within the home folder I want those views to use another layout file okay not the one you know underscore layout.cshtml but have another layout file I want those views to use that layout file if that's the case I can have another view start file within that folder and then we can specify the, the layout file that we want to use within that view start file so obviously this view start file is going to override the settings that are defined in this view start file that's present in the views directory okay so let's actually look at that in action so at the moment you know these views create view details view and delete view they are not using our layout file let's see how to use underscore view standard CSHTML file so I'm going to add a view and let's call it underscore view start let's click add so this should add underscore view standard CSHTML now all I'm going to have here is the layout property so I'm going to specify the layout property so I'm just simply going to copy it from the index view okay so now since we have specified the layout property in this underscore view star dot CSHTML file every view within this views folder is going to use the layout file that we have specified in this file so now when we actually navigate to create view you should notice that it it has to actually use that layout file okay so create view is using that similarly edit view is still using it details view is using it and delete view is also using it so all the views will continue to use the layout file that we have specified here alright now when I use underscore view star dot CSHTML file can I still set layout property on individual views using the layout property now if you remember in every view for example if you look at the index view there's a layout property okay now we have specified a layout file in this view start file 
in spite of having that specified can i still set this layout property absolutely if you set that it is going to overwrite the layout file that we have specified in this view start let's actually look at that in action so let's quickly add another layout file to the shared folder and let's call it actually different layout Let's click add. So that should add underscore different layout.cshtml. And let's use an h3 tag here to specify that this is a different layout file. And after that, we want to render body. All right, so we have another layout file. Now, look at this. If I go to the index view, and specify all right I want to use this different layout file instead of layout.cshtml now if you remember in our view start file we have specified you know for all the views within this folder we, have, we want to use underscore layout.cshtml but within the index view we have overridden that using layout property so I don't want to use you know this layout file underscore layout.cshtml instead use underscore different layout file okay so let's save everything and let's navigate to our index view once again. So I'll refresh that. So we have made the change to index view and it shouldn't use this layout file. Look at that. It's now using a different layout file. Okay. So the answer is yes. You can still use the layout property on individual views. And we especially use that if we want a specific view to use a different layout file than what is specified in underscore view start dot cshtml file. All right, so at the moment we know two places where we can specify the layout file. One is within the view itself, you know, using the layout property. The other one is is using the um, view start file. Apart from these two, is there anywhere else I can specify a layout file? Absolutely, there are two more places you can specify that in a controller action method or in an action filter. We'll discuss action filters in a later video session, but how can we specify a layout file in a controller action method? Notice that when we invoke this return view function, you know, we can also specify the layout file that we want to use. At the moment, if you, for example, if we navigate to create view, look at this, it's using the layout file. But let's say we want to use a different layout file, then what we can do within the home controller so obviously we have this create controller action method which is returning a view since we didn't specify the name of the view by default you know it's going to use a view that is named create okay but let's actually hard code the name so I'm going to use this version of view function which actually takes the name of the view and the name of the master that is the layout file to use and both of them are of type string so the name of the view is going to be create and the master view file that I want to use that's the layout file that I want to use is different layout file so let's copy the name underscore different layout and then pass that here let's build the solution and let's navigate to um, so we are on the create view so let's refresh this so when we refresh this it should be using a different layout file because in our controller action method that's what we have specified so this is again going to override that all right can we write some logic in view start.cshtml to dynamically specify which layout file to use at the moment if you notice our view start file you know we have simply specified the layout file is going to be you know layout.cshtml now can i write some logic here for example let's say if the browser that i'm using is google chrome then use this layout file but if it's any other browser apart from google chrome let's say we want to use different layout file you know can we dynamically um you know select layout files that i want to use absolutely so how do i do that so I'm writing an expression here. Look at that. For example, what are we doing? We are writing an expression here. This expression is going to return true or false. If that returns true, it's going to use layout file. On the other hand, if that expression returns false, then we are going to use a different layout file. And look at what is this doing here. 
we are using this request.browser so this browser property is going to return the browser object and then on that object we are calling is browser and then passing the name of the browser here Google Chrome is that browser Google Chrome if yes it's going to return true in which case use the layout file otherwise use a different layout file okay and to speed things up I have this code already typed so let me copy that and put it in our view start file okay so let's build let's save everything and let's navigate to um, at the moment our edit view should be using so look at that this edit view in the view start in the view start file we have specified use um, basically you know layout.cshtml because notice that at the moment we are using Google Chrome and we have specified this condition if it is if the browser is Google Chrome then use the layout file on the other hand let's actually use Internet Explorer and then let's actually navigate to the same URL and since this is Internet Explorer you know it has to use a different layout file but it's not why is that that's basically because if you remember we have hard-coded whatever we have specified I mean we are overwriting whatever we have specified in this view start file within the edit view so in the edit view we have specified the layout property so this is going to overwrite what is specified in view start so I need to get rid of this one if I want to respect what we have in view start okay so let's save everything and now let's refresh this so now it should be using a different layout file so depending on the browser it's actually selecting which view file to use all right so all partial views in my application are now using the layout file specified in view start dot CSHTML. How do I prevent these partial views from using a layout file? So partial views are not like regular views. We don't want them to be using you know um, the layout files. But for some reason, you know the partial views are still going to use the layout files. Let's see how to prevent that. At the moment, you know we have this details action method. Okay let's first add this underscore employee partial view now let's actually navigate to details view so this details view is showing the details of a specific employee so let's actually go there and let's copy this code and extract that into a partial view and how do we do that on the home folder add a view and let's call it maybe underscore employee and we want to create this as a partial view we want to create a strongly typed view against employee class and let's add that so the model for this view is going to be employee and we have pasted this code so we have a partial view here okay so let's build this now if you look at the details action method within the home controller at the moment so if you look at this details action method let's make this simple okay so if you look at this code you know we are simply saying return view and passing the model object that's the employee object to this view so and we haven't specified the name of the view so since we haven't specified the name of the view this action method is going to look for a view that is named after that method so it's going to look for a view with name details within the home folder so is there a view absolutely so it's going to use that view so at the moment if I build this and then if I refresh this it is still going to use the details view and that details view is using the layout file that we have specified in uh, view start file which makes sense but let's you know actually rename this details view to one detail so obviously we don't have a view that matches the name of this action method so now if we refresh this what's gonna happen it's gonna throw an exception why because there's no details view but what I'm going to do here so I'm going to use a view function where we can specify the name of the view and the model object now I want to return a partial view so underscore employee is our partial view 
so that's what I want to return so now we are not using a regular view we are using a partial view so this code now matches with what we have here so a partial view is being returned but you will notice that in a bit you know it is going to use the layout file that we have specified in our view start file and we don't want that to happen for partial views okay look at that this partial view is still using the same layout file that we have specified in view start okay so how do we prevent that from happening it's very simple all we have to do is we know that this underscore employee is a partial view so make the return type of your controller action method partial view result instead of action result and then return partial view okay instead of view return partial view so that is going to prevent you know the partial view from using the layout file that is specified in underscore view standard CSHTML okay so what's the change that we have to do first of all instead of action result we want to return partial view result and I'm going to return a partial view okay let's build that and let's refresh this so now it should not use any layout file it should simply um, return that partial view and that's what we see there all right now what will be the layout file extension if vb.net is my programming language obviously it will be .vbhtml it is not any different from the file extension that we have got for regular views and partial views all right in our next video we'll discuss using named sections in a layout file on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.